Aircrete versus rammed earth. Who beats who? Aircrete, a nice lightweight insulating building material, or just good old earth? I mean, dirt's cheap, right? Sure, dirt's cheap. And if you use a cheap tool like this little eight inch compactor, you know, you can pack your earth down and you know, it's, it's really cute and really nice for about the first five, 600 pats. And then it gets a little bit much and it slows you down. So that often means we resort to buying these lovely earth tampers, either pneumatic or hydraulic, preferably the pneumatic ones with the right foot on it. And those tools can be very expensive. If you're doing the handwork, if you're digging and digging and excavating a massive amount of earth and then you're mixing your sand and your clay right, and then you're adding and mixing in seven to 10% cement, you wind up with this gorgeous, beautiful wall. Now, to make that process practical for a home of any size, you really need a machine. Let's face it. Having an alternative building constructed for you can cost more than conventional construction, up to $250 per square feet. Building a 450 square foot house can cost as much as $90,000 to have a company build. Build it yourself and save $80,000. Do you want to build alternative homes for others as a professional? You could profit up to $70,000. The material of the building is immaterial slapping mud on a wall, ramming earth, stuffing a bag with dirt, or aircrete. These skills can be learned in a day or two. The real skill begins when you are ready to make your tiny house functional. Electric, solar, air conditioning, plumbing, flooring, or alternative waste water management. This is where many people fail to finish their homes or pay large sums of money to hire skilled labor. Others fail in the planning or logistic stages. They buy the wrong land, underestimate cost, do not know how to hire and manage unskilled labor, or fail to connect infrastructure. This is why we now offer the Terlingua Alternative Building School. Beginner or experienced builder, come learn how to build a tiny house from scratch. In far less time and expense than traditional paths of learning, you can learn and experience every skill you need. Now you can proceed with confidence to build the house and life of your dreams. In my opinion, when you build rammed earth, there's just no substitute and no way to do a job of any size without at least a bobcat. Now, you could use a tractor with a front end loader. <clears throat> Typically, we will push the mix up in a bucket, we'll add our cement, we'll dump it out, and then we'll scoop it up, and we'll dump it out, and we'll scoop it up, and we'll dump it out. So it takes a lot of the manual labor out. You can rent these. Um, I know that locally we get them a small one for about $200 a day, so that depends upon your area. But honestly, um, doing rammed earth of any amount uh, in any timely fashion whatsoever, you really need the machinery because the machinery saves tremendous amounts of backbreaking labor and it saves you a great deal of time. Um, I know a guy who has been packing manually his house uh, doing rammed earth with the tamper and he's mixing everything a, a bucket and a wheelbarrow load at a time and it's been four years now and his small uh, 26 foot structure still isn't finished because of everything else going on he has to keep covering it up and then going and doing something else and coming back to it and so ultimately rammed earth does require a lot of work and while that work can be lessened with the proper machinery with a tamper and with a machine to mix and scoop and pour and excavate your material uh, it works uh, great often what you find is you have to buy in clay or sand because so many sites don't have the ideal mixture on site and so you've got to add material to it. So as much as I love the idea of sourcing native materials, to do it right, you really often have to purchase in materials from another location. Machinery is going to be required. Otherwise, and even still, um, it can be a tremendous back-breaking amount of work and it can take a long time. Aircrete, on the other hand, made from Portland cement, is readily available. You simply mix it up and then pour it into a cast mold or into blocks, and this gives you a building product that is considerably quicker, in my opinion, and a lot less labor, 
and it doesn't require renting or owning expensive machinery. Now, rammed earth as beautiful as it is, it is thermal mass. It is a wonderful amount of thermal mass. If you're depending solely upon thermal mass for a passive heating and cooling system, honestly, it's not enough by itself, even with a foot thick wall or 18 inch thick wall. If you live in climates that have higher temperatures or lower temperatures, it's not enough by itself. And that's why also you'll find that most modern rammed earth houses will have a foam core in between two uh, layers of rammed earth or it'll be earth on one side and foam on the outside and it's necessary to have this insulation added to it so rammed earth can be made into a very beautiful house that is also insulating not because of the rammed earth but because of additional materials you add. With aircrete you know you have an insulation and so it prevents heat from moving from one side to the other side and this is a beautiful thing when coupled with something like a geosource heat pump um, or even a mini split air conditioner run on solar power this insulation allows you to have a very comfortable house that's at the temperature you choose year-round comfortable in any climate and I don't really recommend, if you want an efficient aircrete structure, I don't recommend anything less than eight inches thick um, because that gives you a fair amount of insulation and it exceeds your average home fairly well. And it's not excessively hard to work with or mold or cast or cut or carry if you're making blocks. And uh, so yeah, you know, aircrete by itself is an insulation. You're not going to be 100% comfortable just with aircrete alone. Now, on the other side with the rammed earth, by itself, you can never heat it or cool it enough if you live in climates that don't have a perfect average temperature. And it can require a great deal of energy to keep these structures uh, comfortable. So again, I have to pick Air Creek to win, um, or ideally, I would love to have rammed earth and Air Creek, something for a total of an 18 to 24 inch wall. But you see, it's all about choosing your materials appropriately for your climate, for your desires, and for your design conditions on your site. Um, not everybody's going to be willing to accept uh, discomfort. Um, many people that I've visited that have rammed earth homes, even bermed rammed earth homes, uh, they'll tell you right up front, oh, it's beautiful, it, it keeps me cool, it's perfect. And then when you go visit them, you find they have a window unit in their bedroom because they're not actually able to sleep without an air conditioner uh, as summer begins to drag on and the heat continues. And on the flip side, they have a lot of heat they have to add, either through wood uh, or through uh, propane or electric heat to keep it comfortable because it is, after all, just thermal mass. So, you know, again, it's not about being good or bad or one beating the other. The only way that you can beat either one is to actually combine a thermal mass with an insulation and it allows you to have a much more uh, efficient structure, a much more temperature stable structure, one that lends itself to using cool air at nighttime to help cool it down during the summer or sunlight to warm it up during the daytime. Um, but for simplicity's sake, with aircrete, it's readily available, doesn't require massive amounts of labor, and you can build yourself a structure that with just a little bit of energy input is very energy efficient. Um, it's not at all unreasonable to power a geosource heat pump or even a mini split air conditioning system using solar power. And so by adding the active component to Aircrete, that gives you a perfectly comfortable house. And so that's why ultimately I chose Aircrete. To me, it's much more practical. It's substantially faster, substantially labor saving to simply go with an insulating product, add appropriate technology for heating and cooling to be comfortable in any climate. Now, if you're the person who's willing to sweat a little in the summer and bundle up in the winter and you're willing to go with the average of your climate for your house uh, or you have an abundant energy source, um, by all means, you know, you can do it any way you choose. But for me, Aircrete, in terms of modern, comfortable living, uh, just again, it has to beat out the rammed earth just because of the fact that it's so readily available, uh, it's affordable, ultimately more affordable than hiring a lot of labor and machinery to build a rammed earth house. Even though, even if the dirt's free and even if you have the sand and the clay on your site and even if it's in the right proportion, you're still going to have to buy cement and stabilize it in my opinion.
for most climates, it's the sensible thing to do, and it's gonna stay looking nice. If you don't mind a more of a rustic uh, look that needs a little patchwork every now and then, then you can certainly just use rammed earth uh, with the right mixture of clay and sand. So there you go, a quick summary, and uh, have a great day.